financial risk of taking something like this on the road, I mean, is huge. And I, I do feel it. I try and put all of that out of my head because I'm trying to be creative. But this, I mean, this, there are huge forces in Celtic One. You know, they, unfortunately, you know, what we started, we kind of have to finish, which is a huge orchestra, a huge choir. Um, you know, all the soloists, we have our guitars and bass and pipes and whistles and keyboards and pianos and harps and, you know, I don't know what else. Um, so it's not easy to do. So we had to scale it down to go on the road. I was quite keen that if this was going to happen, what we had shot in the Helix, for me, wasn't what I would like to put out as a live show. Nothing wrong with it, but that was a TV show. Rehearsals for the show began in July 2005 in the Factory Studios, Dublin. I, I certainly know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I've been rehearsing for shows since I was this size, you know, so obviously I know learning new music and learning where to, to move on the stage and everything, but, you know, I was 15 and was packing my bags to go on tour, which seemed like a very, very big, scary thing at the time. <laughs> Pull down. For this, their first live show, the Celtic Woman team would be working with director and choreographer Michael Scott, who had worked on many successful musicals and theatrical shows. It's been great working with them because, you know, when somebody new comes in, you kind of hope and pray that they get what you're about. He got it, I think he got it immediately. It was well done, thank you. Remember when you're singing that song, it's like watching the bird in the garden. Very important that we had somebody like that who was used to putting on a show as opposed to a concert because it's a production, so it has to be well directed and choreographed. Eggshells isn't it, it's the robin in the garden and you know if you move he's gone. I mean, he's done a fantastic job, you know, and he's really put a theatrical spark into the show because what we've done was a TV show, really. Maeve would not be touring with the show as she had just had a baby and was taking time out to be a mum. Maeve's place would be taken by singer Deirdre Shannon. Firstly, it's the, the music itself is phenomenal and it's great to sing. Secondly, the girls and the dynamic within the group is really comfortable. Everybody is at ease with their, themselves and also with each other. We came into this show and nobody knew each other. It was a really unusual situation. So I thought it was going to be very strange and quite awkward, but amazingly enough, the five of us hit it off straight away. We got on really, really well, and it's just been a real pleasure working with the girls. We're all very girly girl. We love shopping and we love, we've got amazing new dresses. Simon O'Mahony has designed the most divine dresses for us. So there's great fun looking at the dresses and um, there's a great old banter going on amongst us. There's no, um, you know, professional rivalry amongst anybody. There's no divas. Oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh, look, isn't it gorgeous? Okay, thank you, everybody. Can I ask you, uh, can I ask you to leave the room as quick as possible with everything you've got, because this is about to be a get-out? In terms of the logistics, it's just mind-blowing. I mean, you would think that there was probably thousands of people behind the scenes, like worker bees, but there actually isn't. I have a phenomenal support team, but it is quite small. A sad and lonely rehearsal room. And who's left? The composer. And the drummer. The drummer. And the engineer. That's it. The stock. The starting point of any musical agenda in Ireland. And what do we get for it, Dave? Nothing. Nothing. Two music stands and an old telephone. Getting on the plane, I thought I was never going to see home again. We were only gone for a month, and it seemed like the end of the world. <laughs> entourage when you're on the road it's funny it's like it's almost like the circus is coming into town because you see the two huge big trucks with the the gear you've got your makeup team you've got your hair team the sound engineers the crew who I have to say are amazing and um, 
There are so many different characters on the road, so many different personalities. But the crew always look after us. I always feel that the five of us were so lucky in that these guys, and some of them are big, you know, burly guys with the long hair and whatnot, and, but they are just like so lovely and they really, really mind us. The best part about touring with, with any show, I think, for me, was always 8 o'clock to, to 10 o'clock. You know, I love I loved doing the show. Um, that was the best bit. Um, the other best element was the camaraderie that you have on the road, you know? If you have a nice group of people, which we were lucky enough to, it's, it's great fun. It's like, you know, it's like um, the best bit of a holiday, you know? <laughs> And then you go and work, and you really like your work as well. The worst bit comes immediately after when I think you've got to get on a bus and drive for 10, 11 hours. <laughs> you know, <laughs> try and sleep, try and unwind, try and think about what's the next day where you are. The craziest thing about touring over the last few years is that I've, I've juggled school as well. So, uh, yeah, it was madness. I would, you know, get up and do my school in the day, and then the afternoon we'd have sound check, and then hair and makeup, try to get in a bit of dinner and then the show at night and then after the show you might have a meet and greet and after that then go home onto the bus, go home onto the bus and uh, do my homework and my study until what hour of the morning and then up again to start it all over again. So I suppose for me it's, it's, it's been a little bit crazier. And after a while that kind of constant travel and being away from family and loved ones you know is I think it's difficult, you know. So you need a very strong family atmosphere. You need really good people around, you know. Well, I think the best bit about touring for me is meeting all the different people on tour every night. All our fans, they're so supportive. And all the different children that come up to you and say, oh, I play the fiddle because of you, you know. And it's, I mean, that really is an honour. It's really an honour for me and um, the amount of support that we get every night, the audiences are so different, performing in front of a different audience every night, it's just so exciting and so brilliant to have that energy every night. People always say to you, God, it must be very tiring, how do you do the same thing night after night? But you have a different audience night after night and invariably something different will happen every night, the audience will react to one song particularly better than they did the night before. And that's what keeps a touring show fresh, I think. Celtic Woman is, is, a, is, a, is a phenomenon. I went to see them uh, initially in Cleveland. We stood at the back of the theater and waited for the, the show to start. And within eight minutes, the whole audience was on its feet, applauding and screaming. I mean, we knew that we had, had, you know, we had a hit immediately. The live shows were a huge success. Critics hailed the shows as a truly special musical experience, a tour de force of musical talent. The one thing we didn't know really from the beginning was would American audiences embrace it once they saw it live. And it was fantastic to see from right from the beginning, the instant standing ovations and just this kind of connection. The connection was instant and it was real and I think we, Dave and I both looked at each other and realized we had something right from the beginning. To think of, as it's turned out, you know, three, four million people going out and buying the CDs, I, I can't picture that. These are numbers and sort of uh, thoughts that are very hard to come to terms with. But they did and then you kind of think, okay, well, and it gives you a little bit of encouragement for the next time or for the next thing that you have to do. You think, okay, well, you know, they like that, that's good. Maybe we can show them some other, you know, things, other tricks we have up our sleeve, you know. And very still now. Girls still? Brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah.